Moshe tells us in this week's parsha, Perak Lamet Psukim Yud Aleph Yud Bet, that's thirty eleven, tells us, Hamitzvah Hazot, Ashe Anochi Mitzavacha Hayom, Lo Niflet Hi Mimcha, Vlorukahi. This mitzvah that I command you today is not hidden from you and is not far from you. In fact, Lo Bashamayim Hi Lemor, Mi Yale Lanu, Hashamayma, Rekacheha Lanu. It's not in the heavens for you to say who will go up for us to the heavens to bring it down to us. Although there's some discussion in the early commentators about whether this, this verse is specifically talking about teshuva or Torah in general. Certainly, had Torah or teshuva been placed somewhere impossible to reach, we could not realistically be expected to observe them. Rather, both are attainable, is what the Pasuk is saying. But what if the Torah is not speaking about the physical heavens, certainly unreachable before Orville and Wilbur Wright copy the movements of birds in the windy sand dunes of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, 120 years ago? What if the Torah is speaking of spiritual heights? As David Melech tells us in Tehillim, Samechet Pasuk Yutet 6819, regarding Moshe Rabbeinu, Alita Belamarum, that Moshe reached the highest heights to receive the Torah. There have been great people throughout our history who bridged the gap between an earthly existence and completely spiritual life. Rav Yisrael Belsky writes in Ene Yisrael that if we rely on these greats to achieve Torah or Teshuva for us, then we're surrendering our own personal responsibility. A rabbi in Judaism is not like a priest in other faiths on some higher pedestal or totem pole from its congregants. No, we are all expected to reach the level of what the Torah in Shemot Yutet Pasuk Vav 19.6 calls Imam Lechet Kohanim, a kingdom of priests. Every Jew must attain Torah knowledge and closest to Hashem for oneself, but not necessarily by oneself. For that Hashem has placed in our midst great writers, teachers, and communities who can help lead us towards these heights. After all, the mitzvot were not placed where only our greatest leaders can attain them. They are equally available for all of us. The Chafetz Chaim once explained why the Torah describes the tree in the Garden of Eden as being in the middle of the garden. It is in the middle because it is no closer to you than it is to me. If we work together, we can have an equal share in the blessings of the mitzvot, granting us a year of good and peace and a Shabbat Shalom.